Namaste, everyone, and welcome to Anchor the Light for this Monday, Monday, August 5. And so I hope all of you had a fantastic weekend. Before we start, let's ask for a blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Chua Kok Sui, Maha Guji Meiling, we humbly ask for divine light, divine love, wisdom, guidance, help, and divine protection. We thank you in full faith, and so it is. All right, so welcome, and um, as always, we do our best to share insights and teachings that will help you not only in your spiritual path, but in your everyday life. So today we focus on something that is very obvious, and oftentimes, because of our busyness, we forget. And that quote from Confucius is actually quite simple. Our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. And this is very, very important because some of you, um, let me see, make sure you guys can hear me. Huh? Some people say there's no sound. One second. Hmm, there should be sound. Uh, maybe you need to turn on your speaker. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so just double check here if I think everybody can hear. All right. So a lot of you probably, well, not probably, you can always have higher and higher goals and aspirations. And one of the things I learned from uh, Tony Robbins, which uh, he just covered a few weeks ago on RPM, the rapid uh, planning method, was you always have to have an outcome. Whatever it is you do in life, you have to have an outcome. And unfortunately, oftentimes we mistake movement for achievement, as he says. You know, like, like we're busy, busy, busy. But the question is, at the end of the day, do we accomplish anything? Right? Do not mistake movement for achievement. Oftentimes we're busy, 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 but the question is, did we hit the target? Now, assuming you are trying to hit that target, the part to remember is, whether you like it or not, it's not usually a straight line. And oftentimes we try to get things done, or we try to achieve something, and we have little setbacks. I personally look at it not as setbacks, but speed bumps. You know, like you, sometimes you're going too fast for safety. It slows you down to give us the opportunity to assess and move forward. Now, it's all about perspective. Oftentimes, if we don't get what we want right away, we think we failed. But in reality, it's an adjustment period. And that's why when I was meditating on what Confucius said, says, let me just make sure I don't <laughs> misquote the guy. Our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. And as you've heard, one of my... Um, Favorite quotes in the Japanese tradition is, fall down seven times, get up the eighth time. And this is for people who want to focus on what, is, what Master Chua Koksui says, constancy of aim and effort and non-laziness. And of course, you know, you heard my version, non-lazy assness. And uh, the idea is you constantly move forward. You constantly move forward. Does that mean you, you hit a wall? Yeah, sometimes you hit a wall. You hit an obstacle. And... Here's another lesson I remember my teacher taught me. If you're in front of a boulder, well, a lot of people just look at it. Oh, man, it's a big boulder. Be like water. Flow on top of it, below it, left, right. If you can't flow around, <laughs> you focus your water, blast through it. And this is very, very important because I notice a lot of people on the spiritual path have a tendency to use spirituality as a means or a reason to be lazy. Oh, I don't know, it's too much stress, or it affects my consciousness, blah, blah, blah. You failed. <laughs> Get up your ass and keep going forward. As simple as that. Okay? I always feel like people say, oh, yeah, but you know, it, I, I, the reason I got in the spiritual path is because I don't want stress. Well, hello, guess what? You won't accomplish anything in your life. <laughs> you know what I said? I know some of you will probably leave after this, but <laughs> I don't really care. If you can't handle it, then leave. You have to make each incarnation count. You cannot make each incarnation count and achieve something in that lifetime by sitting on your ass and making excuses. Stress is only stress if you don't get anything done. Stress, whether you like it or not, is a way for us to assess what is it we're not doing wrong? 
course, course correct and keep going. That's it. It's as simple as that. You know, people think that all people in the spiritual path has to be like, you know, anemic. They have to be like weaklings. Oh, you have a wrong idea. I remember my teacher used to say, Master Chokokse used to say, people think people who are spiritual don't get anything done. They're weak. But in reality, in ancient times, these disciples, these great disciples were students of, you know, advanced, advanced uh, spiritual teachers. And they were trained in music, they're trained in poetry, they're trained in spiritual practice, they're trained in warfare, they're trained in strategy. And then after being trained by the great teachers, they send them out to compete, to be government officials, to be generals, to get things done. And I remember my teacher used to say, you have to leave a spiritual landmark. In whatever you do, after each incarnation, you have to leave a spiritual landmark. There has to be a point where after we leave our, each lifetime, society or people will have to say, because he or she existed, the world is better. And you cannot do that by going, eh, it's too much stress. <laughs> Trust me, please. When people see it, say, oh, it's too much stress. I don't feel like doing it. Go, leave. Find another teacher. Don't waste my time. I know that sounds harsh. But every part of our life, you have to have a target. There has to be an outcome like, okay, what is my target? What is my outcome on the spiritual path? What do I want to accomplish by this amount of time? In my personal life, in my finances, in my health, in my relationship, what is my target? What is my outcome? As Tony Robbins says, what is the result I want? From there... Why must I have it? Now, not why I should have it. Why must I have it? Why must I accomplish it? And then from there, just work your ass off to get there. <laughs> to, I know that, that those words sounds harsh, but in reality, some people, they just need to hear it. Just get off your ass, get it done. Now, does that mean that you won't uh, fall? You won't make mistakes? No, everybody does. That's why... I, I, again, I keep referring to this one, the Japanese three. You fall down seven times, you get up the eighth time. You just need to get up one more time than everybody else to be successful. Do you realize that? Think about it. Everybody's going to get to where they need to get to. You're going to have competition. And oftentimes you're competing by, with yourself. But even if we, if we keep falling... If you just get up one more time, you hit the target. And that's usually a battle within ourselves. Just get up one more time. Now you go, well, I don't know if it's the eighth time, the ninth time. Who cares? If your target is worthwhile, if your outcome is worthwhile, then it doesn't matter if you try a thousand times. Make sense? That's part of constancy of aim, what you want to accomplish, constancy of effort. That means giving up is not an option. Yeah, but that's too much stress. You know what I say, right? Leave. Leave. You're not part of this community. Here, we always say spiritual seekers are achievers, not failures, not weaklings. You want to Feed a lot of hungry people. You cannot say, well, I don't know. It's too much work. Then, then that's not for you. You want to experience enlightenment? You keep going. You don't say, I want to experience enlightenment. Yeah, but I have to sit in meditation every day. That's too much work. It's too much stress. Then leave. That's not, part, that's not for you. It's just not about money and, and money and success and career only. It's in everything. You want to be successful in anything? You keep at it. You know, you have to be like a bulldog. You grab onto what you want and you never let go until you get there. You want to experience enlightenment? Do the work. Do the work. Does that mean we'll, does that mean we'll never fail? Of course we will. But the question is, do you keep going? That's the difference. Now, to clarify, I'm not talking about mindless bullheadedness, okay? You have to have, what is your target? 
you really want it and you have to have a certain plan or as Tony Robbins says, a map of how to get there. And the map basically, if you hit a wall, you keep readjusting. You hit a wall, you adjust. You hit a wall, you adjust. You hit a roadblock, you readjust. That's why I love it when he says it's a map. It's not just task. Because task is like, okay, <clears throat> this is my task. I didn't do it. Oh, well, that's that. If it's a map, I want to get to this destination, whatever that destination is. If there's something in my way, I go around it. If there's something there another way, I take another, I take another, um, take another route. In other words, you keep going, you keep going, you keep banging on that door. If there's a wall, you go around the wall, above, below, that doesn't work, you blast through the wall and keep going. In the spiritual tradition, they call that storming the hell, uh, storming the walls of heaven. Is that right? Something like that. Storming the gates of heaven. You know, metaphorically, of course. And I'm sharing this with you because that's one of the lessons I learned from my teacher. You know, when you're with Master Cho, everything's very peaceful, very calm. That's his energy. But it doesn't mean like peaceful, calm, doing anything done. No. Even though his mind, his emotions, very, very calm, very peaceful, he's constantly focusing on success. How many souls have been transformed in pranic healing? How much has the work moved forward, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So there always have to be an outcome. When you're meditating, it's like, oh, I meditate because uh, I got nothing else to do. I meditate because my outcome is I want to have inner peace. I want to experience oneness with God, oneness with all, and so on and so on. Okay, so the virtue is what? Constancy of aim. That means you know what you want, you know what your outcome, why you want it. Constancy of effort. That means you have a plan, you have a map, you have a strategy on how to get there, and it's constantly fluid. You're constantly readjusting because your eye is on the target. With your health, with your relationships, whatever it is. Okay, so no more of this, I feel so stressed. Well, if you're stressed, that means you're not doing it right. Because good stress is, yeah, I'm about to make a breakthrough. Okay, that means if this doesn't work, let me think of another way. This is just helping me grow. What is the lesson I need to learn? You're constantly pushing. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Any setbacks you get is simply a readjustment time to refine your process. That's it. So I hope that helps. <clears throat> and um, all right, let's meditate. Put your hands on your heart. Focus on your crown. I am that. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion or the thoughts. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, divine power. I am that. The soul, the spiritual self. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one to the divine spirit in me, the divine spark in me. I am a child of God. I am one with God. I am one with all. There's only oneness. Just be still. Maintain your stillness and awareness. There's only oneness. Separation is an illusion. There's only oneness. Now raise your hands in blessing. Be aware of your heart. Be aware of the love within your heart. If you like, you can just imagine someone you love in your heart. That helps you activate your heart very quickly. Smile at that person. And let that loving smile energy in the form of beautiful pink light flow down from your heart through your hands and bless the entire earth. Visualize the earth the size of a little globe or a little ball in front of you. Just fill the earth with beautiful pink light. We will use the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere, let me sow unconditional love. 
Be aware of your heart, be aware of your hands, fill the earth with beautiful pink light, bless the earth with peace and with love. Where there is injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there is doubt, let me sow faith. Where there is despair, let me sow hope. Where there is darkness, let me sow light, sadness, joy. Just picture people you know going through difficult times. Visualize their lives turning around, getting better and better. And may they be blessed with hope and with faith in a better life. So be it. Where there is darkness, let me sow light. Darkness is absence of spiritual light within a soul. May all be blessed with spiritual awakening. So be it. And with their sadness, let me sow joy. Just be aware of your heart, your hands. Continuously fill the earth with peace, with love. With a spirit of forgiveness, with hope and with faith, with light and lots of joy. So be it. So be it. Now be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Lift that feeling through your crown. Be aware of your crown. Exhale. And just stay there. Just be aware of your crown, the center of your crown. Just be aware of your crown. Your crown is filled with so much golden light. Just allow that beautiful golden light from your crown to flow down through your hands and flood your home. Bless every person, every being in your home with peace and with love. Let that beautiful golden light spread to your relatives and friends. Let it spread to your workplace, your country. Let it spread to all the countries in the world. Let all be blessed with this beautiful golden light. Our hearts are one, our souls are one. From the heart of God, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and with kindness. May all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. Just be still and let the energy keep flowing through us. You might feel a pressure in your head, a stretching, maybe a tingling sensation that's all the divine energy flowing through you. Just let that golden light flow down through your hands and let it flow through the entire earth. So be it. Now be aware of your heart, be aware of your crown, take a deep breath, be aware of your entire body, Gently exhale, allow that love and that bliss to permeate your entire being. One more time, be aware of your heart, your crown, take a deep breath. Just be aware of your entire body, exhale gently, let the love and the bliss fill your entire being. Again, be aware of your heart, your crown, take a deep breath. This time, exhale, imagine golden light pouring out of our hands and filling up the entire earth. The earth is filled with so much golden light, both inside and outside, both the inner worlds and the outer worlds. Our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. From the center of the heart of God, through my spirit, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, May all beings in every dimension, without exception, be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. May all be blessed with inner peace and inner healing. May all be blessed with understanding, with harmony, goodwill and the willingness to do good. May all be healed of any pain, sorrow, or suffering. So be it. Just allow the love in your heart, your soul, your entire being 
to be amplified by all these divine blessings flowing through us. If you know anyone going through difficult times, bless them with this intense, intense golden light. May they be blessed with a better life. So be it. From the center of the heart of God, may all be blessed with divine love, divine light, and divine peace. So be it. Just be still. We're just the conduits, the channels, and the pipelines. Just let the blessings keep flowing through us. So be it. Blessings be to all. Now gently lower your hands. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Above your crown, imagine a beautiful golden flame just floating up there. Gently be aware of the love within your heart. Allow that love from your heart to gently float up to your throat. Just let it rise to the center of your head. Be still. Let it gently rise up, up to your crown, above your crown and into that golden flame. <sighs> Let go. You're not the body. You are that brilliant light. You're not any of your emotions and feelings. You are that brilliant light. You're not any of your thoughts. You're not even your mind. You are that brilliant light. Just look at that light. Just silently say, I am that. That I am. I am that self of light. That self am I. Be still. Om. Om. true nature, a being of brilliant light and pure energy. Oh. Be still. Be aware of the inner stillness, the inner peace. Allow your entire being to just melt into that light and just simply let go. Any sound, any noise you hear, just allow you to just drift deeper and deeper into that light. Your entire awareness and consciousness dissolves into that brilliant light. Let go now.
gently, slowly, very gently and slowly. Come back to your physical body. Move your fingers and your toes. Gently and slowly come back. Be still. Let that peace and love simply permeate your entire being. And you can access this anytime you like. Be still. Now gently raise your hands. Let's release the excess energy that our bodies cannot absorb. Picture the people you love in front of you, all of them. Smile. Share that beautiful golden light with all of them. May all of them be blessed with good health, with much happiness, with abundance and prosperity, and spiritual oneness. So be it. May all be blessed. Now be aware of your feet and the base of your spine. Project golden light down into the earth. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it. So be it. Okay, let's give thanks to the divine Supreme God, divine Father, Mother. Thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, we thank you for your immense blessings. Personally, to my teacher, Master Twakok Sui Mahaguji Veiling, thank you in full faith, and so it is. All right, open your eyes. Uh, you might have noticed it's a, the meditation, it's a meditation twin hearts, and a little bit of special sauce to just make your meditation a little deeper. All right, so we will see you in the next Anchor Light, which is seven hours and 30 minutes from now. In the meantime, just a quick announcement it's the month of August, which is the Birthday month of my teacher, Grandmaster Chua Hoxi. So we have a 30 day, 31 day meditation challenge. We call it Living the Teachings, where every single day for seven days, there's a meditation twin hearts for healing a relationship, your health, uh, your spiritual development, your mental faculty, your finances, and so on and so on. So you do that seven times and it rotates again. So every day there's a short meditation twin hearts. In addition to Anchor the Light, you're welcome to join that to just put you on a spiritual routine, okay? And uh, next weekend, we're having uh, Healer's Mastery, five immersive days where we teach Master Tawakoksui's Pranic Healing, basic, or what do you call it, level one, level two, level three, basic, advanced, Pranic Psychotherapy and Crystal Healing in four, no, in five intensive days. So instead of five weekend, uh, four weekends, we pack it all intensely, morning to night, nine to 11 every night, except uh, I think last night, we finish at 8, where we just dive into it. And the good thing about it is people get to understand and practice the teachings of pranic healing in a very, very integrated way. Okay, so there's still some space. It's not online. I know you're going to ask. It's in person. It's one of those things that you cannot learn in, You cannot learn online. Some of you think, oh, you can do it and learn. Nope, it's very different when you're actually seeing it, you're practicing it, you know, you're course correcting, if you're not doing it right, and you get feedback. All right, so... That's next weekend. Just go to masterco.org or panicking.com. The information's there. All right. So the lesson today is very simple. Again, our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Just get off your ass and get it going. Period. Simple as that. Namaste. You all take care. We will see you next time. Good night. God bless.